record here. Okay, well, thank you all for coming tonight. And I do apologize for scheduling this last minute meeting. I thought I had uh, scheduled it and I went checking through my course notes on the website and I realized that I had not, although I had talked about it. Uh, that's good enough though, isn't it? <laughs> Talking about a thing and then hoping it, it happens. Well, anyway, um, I'm sorry about that, and but I'm, I'm very glad that all of you are here. I just basically wanted to sort of touch base with all of you. We've had our first collaborative session, our first collaborative assignment portion done, done, and you all did an excellent job in pulling together and getting that submitted. And uh, uh, we're about almost halfway through the course, and I wanted to just sort of check to see what's ahead of us. And now that we've uh, experienced a few things, I think now you, you might have some uh, questions uh, and comments about what you have, have been experiencing so far. So that's basically what this is all about tonight. And uh, also, I've got some resources here that uh, I want to show you or uh, validate with you uh, in, in helping you get your assignments done. So with that, I'm going to share the screen here. And tell me if you can, when the screen is loaded, tell me if you can see it. Can see it. Yes. Yes. It should look familiar yeah. to you. <laughs> um, it's our it's our classroom, the syllabus portion of the classroom, and I've got it set on January thirtieth. And uh, basically, that's essentially what we're going to to look at going forward. Um, the the next collaborative assignment is due on February 7th. And uh, I want to just talk to you a little bit about now that you've done the first the first portion of the uh, of the assignment. Um, hey, the first uh, the first portion of the assignment, why uh, I wanted to go over a couple of things with you. And in doing so, let me uh, let me stop the share of this and bring us to the um, the template. There we are. I think you can all see that. Is it? Let me make it a little bigger. Is that better? Yes. That's Looks better. good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. First of all, let me just talk a little bit about the marketing plan itself, and and not just why it's important, but but why you are doing this. The marketing, the marketing department is one of the, the about the only department besides that of the CEO, where they both look externally to the customers out in the marketplace, and therefore they rub up, sh rub shoulders with the competition, but they also have to work in inwardly, internally in the organization, with all the departments that are fulfilling the brand promise as espoused by the marketing campaign. So not only uh, does the marketing department have to create a campaign that will service current customers and also get new customers with uh, and entice new customers in new target markets with offerings that are created by the company, things that they can and are able to create and deliver, but they also uh, have to talk to and engage every department that is customer facing or that is connected with the creation of that offering. So it is a very wide ranging activity and it involves disparate departments who may, who their, their goals uh, uh, for uh, improvement and for, for being rewarded may not always be consistent with the goals of the marketing department. And that's where it really takes a lot of leadership, a lot of vision, and a lot of engagement all across the firm. The marketing plan 
is that tool that brings everyone together and is, speaks to them, if it's, if it's well-written, speaks to them and says, look, this is what we're trying to do, and this is your portion of it, how you're going to help us make this work. This is what it takes for you to help us fulfill the brand promise. So there are many layers to this plan, and it's one thing to write the plan, which is what your, your collaborative groups are, but also think in mind, if you had to implement this plan, how would you go about doing it across all of the functional departments in the organization? And that is, those companies that are successful at doing that, like Apple and, and others, I mean, they, they're, they're beloved worldwide companies. Currently, Disney is really struggling right now to maintain their vision, reinvent themselves, and appeal to that next rising level of customers, target market customers, that next generation that's coming along, and remain relevant. And they have existing technologies, and they also have, and they have content, and they also have to pay attention to future technologies that are going to, that are essentially turning the economic model upside down. Video streaming is essentially destroying their broadcast business and so forth. So, so they, they have to maintain what they have, build what they need for the future, possibly get rid of some very strong pillars uh, that are no longer relevant. And all of those things have to be done uh, in real time in an ongoing basis. So now do you see the, are you beginning to see the challenge that marketing has in making sure these things happen in the right space, in the right uh, time to the right people, uh, and also allows the firm to keep going and, and growing. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're sort of doing this, you know, rub, rubbing your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Uh, in the opposite direction when you're doing marketing. You're you're externally focused because that's where the customers are. That's where your competition is. And they're also trying to appeal uh, with their offerings to your customers. And then there's internally in how to make all of these, uh, if you can imagine a, a team of horses, how, how to get them all to pull in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And part of that is done with vision. Part of that is done with clarity through a marketing plan. And part of that is done with real-time goals uh, and, and fulf in fulfilling the brand promise. So what what all that is encapsulated in is in this roadmap that you're creating. And that's why it's so important. And that's why uh, we have it here in this class. So if you would be thinking of that as it's not enough just to write the plan, create a plan that, that you think you, that you would also feel good about implementing. So um, that's one of the greatest, greatest hurdles of the marketing department. On the other hand, let's talk about how important marketing is. Marketing is the only activity that generates revenue and growth for the firm. Now, there are other activities that you can do some fancy accounting and, and sell off an asset here and buy some land there and so forth, but that's not the business of the organization. The business of the firm uh, is furthered by marketing. So it's the only it's the only department that generates revenue and sets and sets uh, sets the goals or achieves the goals set by the company in their strategic plan, of which the marketing plan is a subset of the strategic plan. And the CEO is the only other person in the organization, the only other job level that is actually also customer facing because they are out in the environment, dealing with customers, dealing with banks and financial institutions, and also watching the uh, competition so that they will know how to interject uh, their leadership vision and values into the strategic plan uh, so that it will be remain relevant to all of the rest of the firm. So all of these things are happening in real time at once. And that's why it's so difficult not just to write a strategic plan, write a marketing plan as a subset to that, but then implement what you've what you've written. Because if you've written something in a vacuum that doesn't connect with all of those who are involved in the implementation of the plan, guess what's going to happen? The 
plan is not going to happen. It's not going to be implemented successfully. So this is why you see so many uh, firms having difficulty, particularly in times like we're in right now and will be in throughout 2023, challenging financial times, you will see them struggle in, in their growth, in their expected growth, because they're not implementing what they have devised to be successful. So that's every, that's what's writing on this plan that you're writing, <laughs> that you and your teams are creating. This is really a powerful part of the strategic engine that the company is trying to trying to create and and use to for for growth. So, I hope that will I hope that discussion will allow you to to take on some some real meaning and ownership, uh, more ownership than you would normally have thought about when you're when you're dealing with this. So, I'm going to pause right now, and I want to ask you: Do any of you have any questions about what I've just said, or maybe it's the first time you've ever heard it. You said, well, that's pretty wild, Dr. Crispin. So what are some of your comments? Either you've all just had supper or you're really hungry and are trying to wait, can't wait to get to supper. I'm not sure which. Have, is this something that you have not that you are hearing for the first time because you're not in marketing? Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of like some. I would say that for myself, the marketing piece has never been like a full focus for me. And I mean, I'm not going towards marketing anyway. But I've always looked at sales as the proponent for getting all the um, investments and uh, opportunities for the uh, institutions. So for me, and I understand that marketing obviously plays a role, but it's typically the hard sale, selling that uh, gets everybody into the door. Well, that's a good point, Bavin. Uh, sales is a sub, a subset, a sub component of marketing. And if you look at marketing as being the sort of the uh, the the map, the vision, the direction of uh, of where to go, sales is is exactly right part that uh, does the day-to-day -day making 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 the uh, plan come alive and those sales goals and revenue goals are met because of a good sales team. Marketing happens a lot up here in the customer's mind and sales sort of walks in later and says, okay, uh, you know about our brand, you know about our product, you know how it's going to help you and so forth. Uh, let's talk about your business and let's talk about uh, our product and see how we working together, uh, we're going to make you better. We're going to be that staff that you don't have. And they do that under the direction of the marketing plan itself. So sales takes a chunk of that and, and operationalizes that, that marketing plan into a sales plan. And that's where that comes from that you're talking about, Bavin. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Good point. Has anyone else uh, had any contact with uh, the marketing department or, or any marketing effort in your firm where you work? Or is this all sort of an intellectual process for you? I, I worked in sales. I was an outside salesperson technical sales for four years, but I don't, I never really thought about it anywhere near as strategically as what you're describing here. I was <laughs> more on a day-to-day -day sure. mode of, you know, trying to make my commissions and satisfy my customers' immediate needs, that kind of thing. Yeah. You were smiling and dialing, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, I was adding, I feel like I was adding value, but I wasn't thinking oh. all that closely about how I fit into the grand marketing strategy for the company or anything sure. like that. Sure. Well, if you think of a military operation where the generals are creating the, the grand plan and you're and you're the person next to your 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 uh, buddy in the trench, you're right. You're not going to be thinking about that grand plan. You're going to be thinking about, do I have uh, am I ready? Is my ammo here? Is my weapon ready to fire? Am I ready to face uh, the, the, on, the enemy and the ongoing challenges from a, from a moment to moment day to day? And uh, but the fact that you are in that spot 
is a result of the grand planning or in case of sales, the result of the marketing uh, effort. You are there at that spot because of, of that strategic marketing thinking. But the rest of it, you, you're right. You're on your own. You're, you're going to add value through the earning of your commissions. And that's, and that's what's going to help the firm. I say this because the marketing department creates an imagery of the brand, the brand promise. If, if for instance, let's take Tide. I like Tide because Tide is a Tide is a is a is a great brand, and you know my mother used it, I use it, my son uses it. So uh, Tide has a simple a simple slogan: "Tides in, dirt's out." And what does that mean? It means well, I am taking care of my family, and I trying to uh, solve their needs and I'm trying to be a good parent. And one of the ways I can be a good parent is if I can make sure my family has clean clothes. And therefore, I know my family will have clean clothes if I use Tide, because every time I use Tide, my clothes are clean and I never have to worry about will they get clean this time or not. They're always clean at the level I need them to be clean. Therefore, I am fulfilling my role, that portion of my role as a parent and provider for my children and for the rest of my family. That's a very powerful, very powerful statement that a consumer can make. And it happens with a product that performs superior at a superior level consistently each time, every time. So what will that, what will that um, customer do. That customer will see Tide without thinking. They'll take it, pull it off the shelf, put it in their shopping basket, and they will pay the extra uh, dollar or $2 or $3 for that Tide that they would over some other product, simply because they know, they're assured of the promise that Tide has made to them and has delivered on consistently for many, for decades, uh, th that they that their clothes will be clean, and therefore that portion of their responsibility as provider for their family has been fulfilled. That's what marketing does, is it reaches into the individual and helps them solve a problem. And that's what this plan is all about. What problems are we going to solve for our customers? One of them that we just talked about is I have to have clean clothes for my family because I don't want them to go out and be embarrassed with stains in their clothing or clothing that has been discolored by uh, uh, intermittently performing detergent and so forth and so on. So that is something that uh, a promise does is consistently provide and fulfill. And the marketing department says, okay, tides in, dirt's out. Everybody in the firm is on board with that, and they're watching closely to make sure their portion is supporting that brand promise appropriately, right down to the manufacturer of the product and even the product labeling and the answering of questions on the, at the 800 number when people call in with questions. So you see how all of the firm gets involved in making sure that one product performs consistently that it, when it needs to, and because it does, over decades of performance, the, the, the brand equity in that brand is very high and people are willing to pay more for it because they know it works. So that's the marketing part that gets into the brain. The sales part goes out there and leverages that message and says, I've got the product you need and, and uh, don't, don't just buy one pallet, buy three pallets, Mr. Store Owner, because, you're gonna, because your customers demand this. And they do. So that's, that's where marketing is being the, that driver and sales is being that implementer of the thoughts and, and promises that marketing creates. But everybody has to be involved. So that's why a CMO, chief marketing officer, needs to be looking externally at the customers and, and also developing relationships uh, across a disparate group of functional departments within the firm to make sure that everyone knows their job when it comes to satisfying the customer and the brand promise that the customer expects. Then the vehicle that allows them to do that is the marketing plan. 
because everything that you talk about in the marketing plan, there are many operational subsets to that that each department can use to make sure that they are fulfilling that portion of it. So does all that start to make sense in, 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 in how what you're doing at the top level here uh, of the impact it has on the firm? It does make sense. Okay. Okay, that's those are the things that I want you to have in the back of your mind to drive you forward. So now, having said that, these are the these are the uh, the next uh, the next uh, sections here. Uh, marketing strategies. This I wanted to, you to get the first part under your belt before we even talked about this because I wanted you to be become, sort of become exposed to the format. But now, the, the marketing strategies we look here. And we've got competition, the product offering, and, and, and the strategies themselves. The strategies are simply things that say, if we do this, customers will behave this way and we'll, we'll reach the goals that we need. So that's what you have to figure out. And you've got different tools uh, and resources to, to make that happen. And you'll see that as you go through this section, this next section. So when you do that, let's take a look at the library, because that's where you're going to be seeing a lot of the needed information that you uh, that you have. So let's go back here and let's see, where are we? Yeah, here we are. And Dr. Crispin, I also uh, just wanted to share that while uh, I, I apologize, the other student that echoed, marketing is not going to be uh, something that uh, in my, uh, projection of uh, completing my MBA is not one of my forte or skills that I'll be working on. But the only thing I can recall trying to help navigate through just from real uh, experiences was uh, a few years ago, uh, I worked in the creative department and I was able to watch as the, the uh, I guess you would call them the marketers or the creative folks. And uh, whenever we would send uh, solicitations back in the day, they called them solicitations to customers. It was very eye-opening working in that department, understanding the intricacy between the bolded uh, letter or a bolded word or ensuring that the color was was perfect uh, based on the advertisement, you know, if they're sending out a credit card solicitation. And at that moment is when I realized junk mail costs a lot of money and a lot of time. You, you know, as a consumer, we think they're junk mail and you rip them up, but someone sitting behind in that creative marketing place is really looking at which word should be bolded and what they're trying to advertise to pull the customers to want to get a credit card. So. I just wanted to share that uh, while I'm learning a lot from this class, you know, it kind of tapped back into those days of watching everything come together and creatively trying to see how they can entice the customer to want to get that specific card or sign up for a new card or that program. Thank you. That's uh, Natalie. That's a very good point. And that's particularly relevant now in uh, omnichannel marketing, which means that the customer sees you in a retail store setting. It sees the same product online. It may purchase, it may see the product in one spot and may purchase it in another. And uh, but it's all seamless. And for it to be to remain seamless, that attention to detail, to colors, and to feel, and to message, all needs to be consistent across all of these different platforms. And if they are not, then the customer can become confused and that could be cause problems for the customer in, in feeling confident about purchasing the product. So yes, that's down at that level, even color, a shade of color, if it's different in one, one uh, platform over against another, that can cause confusion and cost the organization. So very good point there. All right, well, let's go. Can you all see the screen now? This is Ed real quick. I just want to piggyback on that. I've been working in my field for over 23 years. And the one thing I can comfortably say is, regardless of what department any of us work in, we all do sales all the time. And we're always brand managers for whichever company we're always working in. Hence the reason why, even in today's day and age, our employers have a very... Um, 
specific policies in our you know, onboarding paperwork regarding our social media presences and what we can do in them. And I remember 13, 14 years ago when, um, you know, Facebook was just kind of newish um, in the outside of the college environment where, um, you know, you would go to lectures and symposiums and, you know, lunch and learns where at the time marketing and sales individuals were saying, if your company is not involved in social media, you're losing because your c customers are having a conversation about you, whether or not you're part of the conversation. Now, they also throw in at the end, that being said, and this is what um, Taylor's also, or sorry, not Taylor's, flows directly into what we now have is omni-channel marketing. They said, your customers, if there's something you're really not good at, your customers are going to key in on it really fast. And that's what's going to go viral. And so I just wanted to throw that in that while this is my first um, course within the Averett MBA program, I think it's really appropriate that it's marketing because, as I said, I truly believe that everyone is marketing. I mean, you're constantly selling yourself and you're selling your department as you have to work with other groups. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good point. And in fact, they say that marketing is too important to be entrusted only to the marketing department. You're right. Everybody is, is to be involved because uh, if you have the brand say one thing and the employees of the organization on social media saying something uh, uh, the opposite of that, then uh, that's a real challenge or a real problem for the, for the, for the brand promise. And, and what the organization is trying to promote, that too can confuse members of the uh, target market public. So yeah, that's, that, that's a very good point. Well, let's, I, I'm, I'm feeling good that uh, all of you are getting it. So that's uh, one of the, one of the uh, uh, things I wanted to get done, uh, accomplish in this course was to, is to, put all of you in the marketing mindset. And I think, I think we're getting there. So I'm very pleased to hear all of that. Well, back to our classroom here. Um, if you don't know this, I'm going to show you how to get to the library because it's very important. Just go down to the help and resources right here in the lower left-hand corner and out comes a sliding menu bar. And if you scroll down uh, to almost the bottom, you'll see the Averett University Library. So it's very easy, very handy to get to your inside the classroom. And here is the, the library website. If you're on campus, this is what the library, over in the right-hand corner here, this is what the library looks like. It's the Blount, the Mary, Mary Blount Library, I believe. And if you can, I would recommend that you go in and, and take a look around and uh, see what the holdings are like and so forth. Also, uh, take a moment to uh, introduce yourself and, and talk to the uh, reference librarians there behind the, uh, because they will also be, they, they, uh, they can also be the people that will help you online. So it's always good to put a face with uh, a function. So down here, it says browse by subject. This is where I would recommend that you start. Uh, what subject are we in? Well, I think we are in business. <laughs> so, so go to the business and up pops the different uh, options. And I would, I would go to databases because that's where the research will be done. And this is very important. These are probably pretty small here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Let me know if you can or not. They're in blue on the left-hand side. Can you see them or not? Or do I need to make them bigger? I can see them. Okay. Um, the two. The, the, two, the two that you're going to use the most are at the very top, ABI Inform and Business Source Complete. Those are the two that you're going to use a lot. But there's one very important one down here called Mergent Online. And this is what I wanted to uh, share. I've, I've pulled up um, a Mergent Online and you can see it here. This is, you can, you can, uh, access by company or stock ticker. So I pulled up American Express. Why? Well, we're going to be, uh, we have a, 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 an American Express in one of our assignments coming up. And it's, this is very helpful 
this database because it talks about the company, its leadership, its financials, but it also talks about its competitors. And that's something where uh, to add dimension, you know, companies do not compete in a vacuum. They compete against other competitors. So this will give you an, an idea of, uh, of, of who the competitors are. And I will just click here on competitors. And you can see that American Express has quite a few. It's group General Electric Capital Services. And it's, it's in terms of total revenues, it's third behind those two. So it lists, it lists by total revenues here. And uh, it also lists by uh, net income. You can see that they're compared to um, Citic Citicorp, Citigroup, at uh, revenues of 78 million, they have a net income of 22 million, uh, which is quite a bit more from a percentage standpoint than both General Electric or American Express. Uh, you can also look into that deeper and see and, as, as to see why, and is there something in there that would help you better understand American Express. Uh, they list different ratios over here, price to earnings ratios. And uh, we see that uh, American Express is double what Citi Citigroup is. What does that mean? Well, uh, that's uh, something that it's that you may see that is valuable to find out. Um, there is something here that also is very helpful. It has what's called a report builder. And the report builder means you can take certain segments of these and move them over and put them in a, and put them in a report. Things you want to focus on, you can put in a report and focus on that report. Let me show you what I mean. Down here, there are the selected data terms are, are company details. Well, I put, I clicked on financial highlights and over here in the middle, it has an arrow that allows you to push the over to the report, what you, what you want in the report. And in addition to company details here, uh, there is company financials. So um, let's see if I can get this right. You can do a, 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 an income statement and ratios and click on that and they go over to the report. So you can isolate down just to uh, a simple, uh, a simple, simple report. And, and then at the bottom here, you can select the format if you want it to be in HTML or Word or uh, and all those things you have the choice since i only want to see it on the screen i'm going to choose html and then i'm going to click create the company report let's see what happens well before you could say bob's your uncle here it is and it is the report here it lists all of the important information about the company its website, its uh, offices, its shareholders, and so forth. Those are some good general overview details uh, that you might want to use in your in 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 terms of your report if you need to. And over here is the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and uh, stock price, and other types of of uh, reports that can give you a factual picture of what it is you may want to write about in, in American Express. And all of this happened in the, in the blink of an eye by using these tools that are available to you in the library, you know, particularly in Mergent Online. For instance, um, earnings per share in 2022 are $9.91 in, uh, in, in uh, I think the, what is it, the first quarter? No, the fourth quarter, second, no, quarter, the quarter three and quarter four, here we are, earnings per share are $2.43 and $2.26 respectively. Not a lot of fluctuation, so that tells a story in and of itself. And uh, they also have other ratios. The return on investment is 35.69%. Is and... Uh, Net income per employee is 125,938. Is is uh, that's net income? Uh, is that is that is that important? Well, it means that the company could be productive, but that, that doesn't you don't know that unless you look at other companies in the industry 
to look at the same ratio and see how it compares. That's with the value of looking in the merchant database and looking in the competitors, because you can actually pull this up for a Citibank and others to make these comparisons. And then you can, then you can write about it and say, America Express, a very good company because they have uh, excellent revenue, in, industry revenue per employee uh, numbers. And, and then you can give a fact. And that's where this is very important is because it has uh, facts that you could use. Any questions about the Merchant Online database? Is this the first time you've seen it in action or have you used it uh, before? The first time I've seen it. Well, good. I wanted to show it to you. It's not only powerful, but also it's a sort of use it or lose it uh, skill. And I would recommend that you go in and use it on and try to use it on for, for, for uh, American Express, but also use it for other, um, other companies that you're interested in just to become skilled at what the report, at, the, at what this information has to offer in the report generator and so forth. And then it, it, because researching is a skill, the more you do it, the better you get. And by introducing you to these tools, uh, I want to encourage you to use them, even if you don't have to, because that will mean when you do have to use them for an assignment, you will be that much more skilled and the uh, technique and the process where you get this information will become much more uh, available and uh, familiar to you. And that will make you a stronger, more confident and better communicator. So all of these things that we're talking about today are, are very important. Okay. Uh, let's see, we'll go back to, and, and this is just, Mergent is just one of many, of, of many uh, resources. Nexus Uni is another one like Mergent. You can, you can use either one of them and see which one you like best. I always use Mergent because that's something I became familiar with a long time ago. And you couple that with um, ABI Inform about the company and so forth. And all of a sudden you're starting to get a clear picture, a factual picture of uh, the topic that you're writing on. And then you can create your um, reference and bibliography from that and then write from that those selected reference bi bibliography references. And that's your report. And you do that over and over and over again throughout the MBA program. And you will find that you become very skilled at it. And in your own business, when you have to solve or resolve problems or challenges, um, then you can you can use these techniques you learned in in your program to solve real life problems and challenges in your own company and present because when you present at the executive level, which is essentially what this assignment is all about, when you present at that <laughs> level, uh, the CEO and the executive team, they already know lots lots of information that you may not know. But whatever you present, it, if, if it is supported by facts and information, that will gain your credibility and your message is more likely to be heard, believed, and acted upon. So that's why this is important to, to know also. Okay, well, this uh, is, is pretty much all I wanted to show. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you about uh, with... Um, let me share the screen again. And I'll put this, let me put this, um, put this in the uh, uh, chat, this, this URL. It's uh, from Claritas, which is a um, marketing research. And you can copy that out of chat and you can sort of have that and you'll pull up and you'll get this screen that I'm about to show you here. This is the Claritas uh, website. The value here is it's a it's it's for marketing and you could put it you could put in a zip code and it will tell you from a psychographic standpoint and a demographic standpoint uh, about what's going on with the population inside that zip code. And I took Danville's zip code and put in 24541. 
And this is what uh, I've, I've, it shows over here in a map, the, the 24541 zip code. And it has down here, first of all, uh, PRISM is a psychographic uh, measurement site. And it shows the different names of the psychographic groups that are most prevalent in that area, in the 24541 area. Golden Ponds, Low Tech Singles, Crossroad Villagers, Park Bench Seniors, and Bedrock America. You can click on each one of these and you can, you can see in more detail. Down at the bottom here, it lists a number of bar graphs, households by income. And you can see that 50 to $75,000 here in the middle is probably the more of the average than anything. And as you see the stair step down to the right, you probably can't see the numbers, but the very last one is $500,000 or more as, a, as an income. Not very, not very large here. So if you were in the business of, of looking at opening an, a Lamborghini dealership, automobile dealership, zip code 24541 may not be your first choice, simply because people may desire to buy your product, but you can tell by their income, not many can afford it. So you wouldn't be able to sell too many Lamborghinis. Well, that's just by income. If we look at the household composition, what makes up these this population, we, we, get, a, we get a pie chart. And over here on, the, on, the, on the, left, the left pie chart, it shows right here, as I, as I sort of hold, rest my cursor on it, you can see that it, it pops out. That's one person, one person household. So a lot of people, it looks like a lot of people live alone. This one is a person household. So one and two people household or two thirds of the population. That's pretty easy to see. So that will tell you, you know, if your product, if your product is geared towards one or two persons, you know that, that that's mostly what this market will have. Now over here, married, no children, that's fairly large, but other no children. In other words, this is a population where there are not, not that many evenly distributed groups of children anywhere. So that will also tell you something about how, what products and offerings would, would work. Well, this is pretty curious. So let's look at the, the uh, population by age. Look at how the stair step is low and then just hockey sticks up to the last one, which is 65 plus, look at the, th this would explain why there aren't many children, because most of the children are gone. The population is mostly 55 to 65. If that sweet spot, 18 to 34, is right here, here, and here, not, not many, not many in that, in that group, that would, that would be that sweet spot to buy your regular consumer products. So then we say, well, then what is the race, race and ethnicity in 24541? And once again, we can go to, uh, we have uh, a large population of Black African American and a large population of white. So it's, it's basically black and, uh, black and white with smatterings of uh, Asian and also uh, two or more races, mixed races. And then over here is... Hispanic, Latino, and then not Hispanic, Latino. So we know that most of the population is not Hispanic, Latino. So you put all these together and put them against your product offering, and that will tell you what the composition of your target market is and can give you an idea of just who is going to purchase your product. If your product is something geared towards uh, youth fashion, you're not going to be selling much here in, in, in area code, zip code 24541. But if it has to do with uh, senior citizens, home health, uh, insure, uh, reverse mortgages and, and other things, you've got a good market here. So uh, this is how you can look ahead and see what your target market is going to look like. Uh, Claritas is one of those uh, great dashboard uh, organizations that has already crunched the data for you to use. Any questions about that? You find that interesting or helpful? Yes. 
Well, most yes. of, thank you, thank you. Most of marketing has it's a is based on as many facts as you can as you can get because the bet, the investment in it is so great. It's the largest expenditure uh, outside of payroll on an annual basis that the company typically makes, and they pay a lot in payroll. So this is this is a bet that they place a wager that they will, if they put in $1, they hope to get back one $1.10 to $2 on each on their investment. And if they don't, then they, then people lose their jobs. So it's a very important part of the organization. And so supporting every decision in the strategy with something that, can, the, that, that, that is factual uh, is very important. And so that's why these, these types of sites, these types of resources are so important because you don't know if, you don't exactly know how many of those senior citizens are going to purchase your product, but you know how big that group is. And your goal is to appeal to as many within that group as possible uh, so that you can, your offering will be accepted and purchased. So it, it, it's, it's a lot of uh, build as many facts as possible, but in the end, you don't know until you know. And you know when the cash register starts ringing, people start purchasing. But that's after uh, you've, you've made the pitch, after you've, you've uh, imp begun implementing the plan, after the meter begins running. So that's, the, that's why these, these sites are so important. Okay, any, any questions about that? All right. Well, that's essentially what I wanted to show you tonight and to sort of keep you energized about the work that you're doing in the class, which by the way, you're all doing a very good job. I, uh, I'm very, very pleased with, with uh, your progress and your engagement. And I think it's just really super. And I wanna, I wanna encourage you to keep that up because uh, this is something the more you dig, the, the, the more reward you get. Uh, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to help you understand what shovel you need to use and where to and where to use it. <laughs> the rest is up to you. But if you're excited, you're going to go you're going to go wherever you need to go. All right. Any more questions before we ring off tonight? Comments? Was this helpful? That's very helpful. Thank you. Yes. Very helpful. Oh, good. Good. I want you to use this in a way that marketers use it uh, to develop that mindset. And you'll find that you, uh, a lot of things will open up for you and you'll see, that you'll see why marketing is, is a lot of fun. It's, it's because it's all about us. We market to people and we are people. So you find out a lot about yourself by trying to find out about others and what they, and what they desire and what problems they need to be solved. I agree. Yeah. Well, everybody, we've uh, we've come to the end of our of our discussion. We've recorded this, so I'll be posting this on the website, uh, the classroom. So if you want to go back and look at it for review, uh, you say, you know, I remember Dr. Crispin said something. Uh, what was it? You can go back and review this recording and uh, and and get that revitalized. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah, Sounds thank you. good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you. Uh, for for attending tonight on such short notice again i want to apologize for that but uh, i'm so happy that all of you uh, did attend and for those of you who were not able to attend we have this recording and we hope that you'll enjoy that too so in the meantime i'll see you in class <laughs> stay safe everybody yeah right. thank you bye